From the travels of Adam and Eve outside Eden to the Exodus journey and the journey of the gospel from Galilee to Rome, road trips are a frequent experience in the biblical story. Welcome to Rhythm and Word, a midweek worship offering of Fourth Presbyterian Church of Chicago, where we'll be exploring how God's people and the message they are asked to bear are almost always on the go and where God shows up on the road. Our scripture reading today is a retelling of one of the most famous road trips in all of Christian scripture, the Israelite journey out of Egypt, through the wilderness and to a promised land. Today, we hear the familiar story as told in the voice of Moses in the book of Deuteronomy. But before we begin the journey, let's get ready by readying our hearts and minds for worship with these words from Psalm 130. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in God's word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning. More than those who watch for the morning. Now as the, you hear the music that weaves through this service, we invite you to listen, to pray, to sing if you wish, or sway your arms, or simply close your eyes and let the words and melodies immerse you in God's holy embrace. Each day with thee, lead me. 
The prophet Moses tells the people of Israel in Deuteronomy chapter 8, Remember the long way that the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness in order to humble you, testing you to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep God's commandments. God humbled you by letting you hunger and then by feeding you with manna with which neither you nor your ancestors were acquainted in order to make you understand that one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. The clothes on your back did not wear out and your feet did not swell these 40 years. Know then in your heart that as a parent disciplines a child, so the Lord your God disciplines you. Therefore, keep the commandments of the Lord your God by walking in God's ways and by fearing God. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with flowing streams, with springs and underground waters welling up in valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land where you may eat bread without scarcity, where you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and from whose hills you may mine copper. You shall eat your fill and bless the Lord your God for the good land that God has given you. Take care that you do not forget the Lord your God by failing to keep God's commandments, God's ordinances and statutes, which I'm commanding you today. When you've eaten your fill and have built fine houses and live in them, and when your herds and flocks have multiplied and your silver and gold is multiplied and all that you have is multiplied, then do not exalt yourself, forgetting the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who led you through the great and terrible wilderness, an arid wasteland with poisonous snakes and scorpions. God made water flow for you from flint rock and fed you in the wilderness with manna that your ancestors did not know to humble you and to test you and in the end to do you good. Holy wisdom, holy word. Ever gotten ready to head out on a trip but realized you didn't know the way? Or ever needed to get somewhere in a hurry and your brain can't figure out shortcuts? For ages, the solution has been to use maps. Those are stick maps, star maps, nautical maps, or the familiar Rand McNally. Cartography has been the way to chart a course from point A to point B. Of course, these days, mapping has mostly shifted to a digital space. We simply type in a destination and then a route almost magically materializes. But the navigation that follows becomes tricky when someone else is making the path for you. With a physical map, we often charted our own course, deciding for ourselves which twists and turns we desire to take. But now, in a kind of leap of faith, we rely on apps to tell us which way to turn and when in order to avoid traffic or make an additional stop. So unless the trip is routine, It's as if we're driving into the unknown, totally dependent upon a force outside ourselves to find our way. That feeling would sound familiar to any Israelite on their way out of Egypt. They too were propelled by a divine force, no less, out into an unknown wilderness with only the faintest idea of where the promised land was located or how they would even get there. They held on to both their trust in God, who they were only beginning to know, and their deep desire for a world beyond the one they had always known. The poet Maya Angelou writes that the caged bird sings with a fearful trill of things unknown but longed for still. Her profound words are a contemporary expression of that powerful emotion. And that desire is powerful enough to drive us through all kinds of obstacles and rough-hewn paths. The kinds of paths that require grace to get through. The kind of grace that is found in mana and water streaming out of a rock. The kind of grace the God of the Exodus offers. So as you go forth on your journey, what is the deep desire of your heart for which your soul sings? And where do you need to trust in God to lead your way to it. 
I invite you now to come before God with your joys and concerns for yourself, the ones you care about, and even the world. You might light a candle as we pray together. Let us pray. Holy God, you guide our path in a pillar of cloud by day and fire by night. We pray at this time that you might guide the course of the world, its many nations and peoples, including our own, toward goodness, justice, and flourishing. Our way feels so uncertain with the seemingly constant specter of violence and mistrust and flat-out injustice. We lift our voices for those whose way to flourishing is blocked by systems of exclusion. Lord, open the way for all your children to live the full lives for which you created them. And for those whose road today is marked by loss and grief, we pray. May they be strengthened in their walk, even just to take the next step. And may they be accompanied, O oh God, by fellow travelers who will hear their story and carry some of their load as Jesus does for us all. This is our prayer today, O oh God. We offer it along our way. And we use these words that Jesus gives us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
sunshiny day. And now, friends, as you continue on your daily journeys this week and this season, may the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. The rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of God's holy hand. God be with you. Until next time.